So to start, we're gonna play a little game. And I'm gonna share my screen here. And the game is called How Much Energy Game. Why do we need to talk about how much energy? Because we need to know how much we put in the battery. We have to think about, it's, I like to think of battery planning, emergency planning, like packing. Like when we have emergency situation, we have to have a go bag, right? It's like when you're going to going camping, you need to know how much food you're going to bring, how much water you're going to bring, how much, what kind of clothes and tools and whatever things, entertainment things that you might need. These are the things that you have to prepare for. And so the same thing, when we're preparing for energy, we have to know how much energy, but most of the time, we're just mindlessly consuming energy. So a big part about being part of creating an emergency battery, a community battery power supply is to understand our relationship with energy. So what this means is we're gonna understand what energy means. And in front of you, we will see seven appliances. And we're going to play a game together as a big group. And so if you can go off mute, since I only see people who are turning their camera on. So if you want to participate, we'll need you to go off mute and yell out things. The game here is let's guess, what do you think it uses the most energy out of all of the seven appliances that's probably in your house? And you probably need to use it when you don't have power. Fridge. What? Fridge. Okay, yeah. we got Robin who gets fridge. Uh, is the most energy intensive out of the seven. Anyone else have a different guess? I could be wrong. Yeah, it's okay. Depending we'll on the hair dryer, I think that's it pulls a lot of electricity. Okay, we got a little depending on the hair dryer, maybe. Hair dryer, tiny little hair dryer. Might be more than fridge. Moda. Any other guesses? Any other guesses? Modem, I think was said. Modem, modem. Okay, another guess is the modem. So powerful, right? It's powering so much things. We're getting connected to people all across the planet. Modem's got to have lots of energy. Any other guesses? Kettle. Kettle. Okay, kettle, it's hot water. Creator of the hot water, turning from cold water into hot water. It's got to have energy. We got another guest there. Any, anything else we have? Any other guests before we start jumping in and see what exactly the answer is? There you go. Oh, I was just saying the hair dryer. I guess it depends on how much uh, hair you have, huh? Oh, yeah. How much hair, too. Yeah. Oh, I also see in chat. Oh, we got people voting for kettle. AI that assistant. fan probably takes a lot, too. Yeah, we also got Depending a fan. Depending on the size of it, the real size of it. I, mean, yes. I think fridge is probably the most. But then those little appliances like the kettle and the fan, if you put those in incorrectly, you can blow a fuse in your entire building, in your entire apartment. So they can draw a lot of energy, the fan and the kettle. You can't blow a fuse with a laptop or with a smartphone or with a modem, but you can blow out a lot of stuff with a fan and a kettle. Thanks and maybe back. a hairdryer, but... I think that, that would be the third of those three. I would go fan, kettle, hair dryer, but of course, fridge first. And kettle, hair dryer, fridge first. All right, great. Thanks for that, Calvin. That was awesome. Little analysis. We also got, I see in chat, we got fridge, computer. All right. In general, okay, let's see, space heater. Anything with heating element. Oh man, okay, so now, Let's check something else. Since I've heard so much about fridge, we have to click the fridge. How much is the fridge exactly? Oh, shoot. Sorry, I click on the, the fan by accident. I think I click on the fan by accident or, <laughs> sorry. So the fan is 65 watts. Now, a lot of you would be like, how do you even measure energy? Uh, what is a lot? Is 65 a lot or is that very little? So I guess fan would be a good place to start. And plus fan was being said, maybe fan is a lot. So 65 watts is a fan. 
I hope we're able to get, okay, so now go into the fridge. It's a lot of people are guessing the fridge. How high is the fridge? The fridge is 800 what? watts. Yes, it is high, 800 watts. So to think about the fridge, what is the fridge? The fridge is not just this magical box that just turns things cold. It has physics behind it. It's this really highly insulated box that has a compressor that turns, use physics to turn room temperature into cold air and uses fan to move the air from your kitchen probably is where your fridge is, but you can put your fridge anywhere you want. I don't care, I won't judge. Remove the air from whatever room is and go into that box and keep the cold in. If you think about your fridge, the fridge is mostly sitting there quietly. Sometimes maybe once in a, once an hour, it will ramp up. That's when the compressor's running, that's when the fan's running, and that's when the energy is being drawn out. Because of the fridge does not move, does not turn on so much, but it's still, it, it doesn't actually draw energy all the time. But when it does, it's a lot. So we get 800 watts. But right now we only saw 800 watts and 65. So we also heard, let's say Wi-Fi was also a guess that I remember, let's just go to Wi-Fi. Just a gauge of what exactly things look like. Oh, Wi-Fi modem is seven watts. So thinking about what exactly these things that we rely on is doing. Here we have this tiny little, box that's sitting on the side in some room that's connecting, that's con turning some um, communication information. Yes, here, I hope I'm being sure explaining this accurately. <laughs> turning some information through some wire that's connecting to the little box. And then it will shoot out Wi-Fi that all your devices will pick up. And because it uses just like these lights, Think about what the Wi-Fi uh, modem looks like. It's got LED lights. LED is very efficient. You don't have incandescent light bulb on your modem. So it's only seven watts. And compare that with the fan. The fan is, a, is an electric motor that turns these blades around. Of course, it depends on the size. It might be different. But all it's doing is spinning. So we get six to five watts. But now we have people who are talking about hair dryer. Obviously, it depends on how much hair you have. If it's crystal mm -hmm. using it versus yes, you're using it, we're going to be using different amount of energy. But even just the appliance itself, we're now talking about a hair dryer that turns air from the room temperature into hot air. It has something that turns it hot and also a fan that blows it out very fast to my hair. And so now we have 1,300 watts. We also have people, so now I think somebody mentioned, a few people, a couple of people have mentioned things that had heating components would use a, a lot of electricity. So we got kettle also, 1,500 watt. That because all it's doing is resisting, is slowing down the electron, electrons from mm -hmm. moving. So it heats up the metal. And when the heat, it uses the, the electrons heating up to heat up the air for air uh, hair dryer or the water for your kettle. So knowing how much it uses then actually helps you understand the spec for your battery. Now, I think everyone seems to get a sense like no matter how much we rely on these amazing computers like the laptop and our tiny little phones, they actually don't use a whole lot of energy. There's quietly sitting there except mine right now is sounding like an airplane about to take off. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't use up that much energy compared to the fridge or definitely not the hot water heater. So 100 watt for the laptop and then for the smartphone to charge it, it's only six watts. So this hopefully gives you some idea and understanding of what some appliances, how to be in relationship with your appliances instead of just blindly using it, instead of just grab my glass and drink it. And not even think about it. I think, what is this glass doing or this cup doing for me? It is holding water and using in re relationship with gravity. I tilt my glass and the water will pour out. So being conscious of the relationship with the things that we, we rely on is also being conscious of the things that we're in community with, not just the people, not just the living beings. So being conscious of it is one really important piece of understanding what are we preparing to actually understand how much is 
how much energy we need in our community. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this how much energy game and see if there's any questions before I pass over to Yasir to then talk about the box of the little battery. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, Stephanie. So when you give us the wattage, is that per hour, per minute? How do I gauge this? Like it takes an hour to charge my phone. Is that six watts an hour? That's a great question. Then yesterday was about to get into that. Would you like to just handle that? Oh, I can oh. wait. Okay, great. Are there different batteries for different items? Like if some items are high surge and some are low, like passive, do you use like different types of uh, batteries for them or you can use the same? Uh, if you're gonna get into that later, no problem. These are yeah, really but, great questions. Yeah, yes, yeah. If we can, uh, let's table those and then I can, if someone can write them down and then at the end of the session, the section we're about to go into, then I can touch on those. Or the second one, the first one I can just answer right now and say, yes, when you see an appliance and it has a wattage rating on it, that's wattage per hour. So the standard is it'll give you a wattage per hour. So if you see six watts, you can assume it's six watts per hour. Also, they were they you might hear the term called watt hour, which is the same thing. Yeah, um, so if, if you run the fan for an hour, 65 watt hour. If you run for two hours, you multiply that by two. So that's basically the unit of energy. Obviously, we're simplifying this a whole lot because we don't want to get too much into the physics of things that you can probably very easily find on the internet. We're trying to really focus our, our learning. Um, objective into how do we really think in community when it comes to these technical things as well. So if you don't feel like your answer, your question has been answered, please hold on to them because we're definitely going to get to them even more, especially now we're going to get into the battery basic. Uh, yeah. saw all the numbers, <laughs> but what is an actual answer? The answer is kettle, I think. It's all the things that create heat because it slows down electrons from moving. So it's important, I hope, this is also a fun exercise for you to think about what are these things that you're relating with. It could also be used as an exercise with your community that you were thinking last week about who are your community and maybe having an exercise, like what do you think uses the most energy? Like and you that. know what? <laughs> what could also be a consideration is what provides the greatest value so a refrigerator can hold formula can hold medicine can hold food so that's important and then what they call command and control so the items which enable you to communicate your phone and if you have a phone and a laptop you might get more use out of your phone and save wattage from the laptop. So the triage of creating command and control capabilities so you can contact first responders who of course have their own agenda, but like with an emergency, like if you're doing CPR, the first thing you do is move a crowd away. You see what the status of the individual is, and then you have someone who's there go and get help. So having that phone charged is a way to get help. And to have that refrigerator available will provide certain things for individuals. Again, food, maybe medicine, maybe formula, and it might keep from other things happening. If it begins to melt ice, now you have an issue where you've got like melting things. <laughs> when you're now you've got ice cubes that are melting, you've got stuff that's thawing out, et cetera. But that's just me thinking down the road. So great. Thank you, Kelvin. Yeah, thank you for that. I think that kind of, just so everyone knows, the homework from last week was what does your community look like? A lot of things when we start thinking larger and like applications, um, like uh, Kelvin was just sharing, it really depends on what your community looks like. 
you could have a community that needs heat where the refrigerator is not that important or the things in the refrigerator can go outside outdoors things in the refrigerator can go in a crawl space just what we really want to try to do is make sure we encourage thinking outside of the box and that's a probably a term that we'll probably continue to use or as uh, crystal says thinking outside of the ice box so where if you do have a long-term situation where you need to keep food cold again like traditional knowledge tells us that where food was stored before it was in the ground ground temperatures are somewhere in the area about 54 degrees which is uh, fahrenheit which is pretty cold so your refrigerator is like 43 so you can actually dig a hole put your food inside of there and it will stay cold and stay good perfectly fine food um looking at the the game that crystal just shared with us regarding like the heating element the the kettle or sometimes a space heater when you look at those items and that 1500 watts and you're looking for a battery unit that's going to, to power that understand when you see the wattage of the power unit how those two things relate and we're going to get into that right now so you can say great i have this power unit what can i do with it what can i do with it what can i do with it what i can plan for and how to the triage to the Kelvin's point there. 